Hello everybody, welcome back to the fish room. So Lou here and I've just uh, had a box uh, delivered from Columbia. Um, so uh, it's pretty dark in here, I've got all the tank lights off um, and just the natural light behind me and I've just let them acclimate to the light for a little bit. Um, but Columbia, the fish come um, all in one bag as each species. So we've only got four bags in here um, for the four different fish species that I have ordered today. Now it's going to be a little bit difficult for you guys to see what I am doing, um, mainly just because these bags are quite thick. Um, so I, I'll do my absolute best, but as you can see, yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult to show you what I've got. Um, so we'll get them out and we'll float them in the tanks for about 20 minutes because they're not actually feeling too cold. Um, and then hopefully I'm going to be able to show you what we've got. Um, and uh, actually be able to get uh, them on camera instead of these blurry little globs here. So while we are waiting, I do have some dim lights on on this row. Um, we'll check up on my uh, L397 male. Um, so the babies have hatched and they have nearly absorbed their egg sacs now and I'm very much expecting them to come out very soon actually. Um, there's a lot more in here than I thought there was, um, but I will need to just get the camera to actually focus on them for a second. Um, but no, I've decided to call this guy Dracula, because um, as you can see, he's very, very uh, adverse to the lights. And um, yeah, when, when he senses the light, um, all of the babies scurry down in front of him. Um, but no, they're definitely um, starting to look a little bit less yellow in the bellies now. So I think we've almost got our egg sacs absorbed and yeah there's um there's a lot more in here than i thought there was he's been an amazing parent to be honest um so yeah um i'll pop some food in and uh we'll we'll see what happens because i do feel like they are going to be wanting to come out um and start having some food i haven't spotted any outside of the tank yet um uh, not outside of the tank sorry outside of the cave um but it's been nearly three weeks since these were laid now um, so they've taken quite a while, um, low and slow I guess, and isn't he just glorious with all of those spikes, all of those odd end toads all over his body, um, and yeah the little baby's looking good to be honest, it's really difficult to get a gauge on how many there are but um, there's definitely more than I thought there was because he just hasn't been able to um, let me get a glimpse of them the whole time. And we've also now got the Pinocchio whip tails in a species only tank. I say species only, I've actually popped some shrimp in here because um, I actually imagine as the shrimp breed, uh, they're just little, little uh, yellow neos, um, they will probably eat baby shrimp because they quite like live food. Um, so no, the male is on eggs, uh, I think he's down the back. Um, and then we've got lots of females here, there are a couple here that I reckon may be younger males as well. Um, it can be a little bit difficult to tell, but there's a couple over here that um, I just feel like they've got slightly uh, more developed um, mouth parts. Um, I call them their moustaches, the things that they use to hold the eggs. But no, the male's been hanging down out down the back. So we've just got some um, low-lying cover in here, just some low bent pieces of wood that they quite like hanging out under. A bunch of moss. A um, little bit of uh, plastic plantage just to uh, make them feel secure so that's sort of like bent over the top um, so that they feel like they have cover um, and then yeah as well as a, a big old um, sponge filter which is inside a pond basket with uh, alpha grog um, stuffed up to the top which is my sort of go-to um, way of making sponge filters a lot more efficient to be honest um, and then there's also a cheap little uh, pump in the back here just with some coarse sponge which is giving us flow um, so we want to just avoid any build up on the substrate and things like that um, so it's a toss up between it being sort of like nice and bioactive because these guys really thrive on a really bioactive sort of environment lots of um, microfauna and things like that um, I believe they need the sand to incubate their eggs um, now these guys weren't breeding because they were in my discus and even though I was leaving him to it, and I believe he was carrying them to full term, which takes quite a while, it takes a good couple of weeks, um, the discus and the butterfly cichlids that I have in there were very likely eating them. Um, so I moved them into their own tank. Oh, is that shrimp buried? I don't know. Um, so yeah, we've moved them over into their own tank and the male didn't actually drop his eggs when I moved them in here. And yeah, so I'm pretty determined that the eggs are photosensitive 
Um, they don't like being exposed to light because I wasn't having any success in a bear tank. So the main reason I just wanted a bear tank was just because the babies do not tolerate lots of gak buildup on the bottom very well at all. Um, and it's very, very, very difficult to clean the tank when you've got sand colored babies. I mean, imagine these, but like as big as Gappy Fry, that's what they're like, um, especially when they start out. Um, so it can be very, very difficult to clean the tank. So that's why we're going with the power head, which is what I ended up doing last year when I was having success with these. Um, and yeah, this is a, oh goodness, it's a 40 centimeter cube, so it must be about 55, 60 liters. I'm not sure. These are deceiving because they're actually longer front to back um, than they are wide. Um, so I don't know whether you can see, but yeah, these are actually longer front to back than they are wide. Um, so I'm not entirely sure on the dimensions of this. They're very lazy, they've got really, really low bio load. Um, and yeah, basically the whole back of this is filtration. So just for their breeding season. And then um, I've got a couple of tanks next door that maybe I can move the babies in or maybe move the adults into to do a little bit of population control. Not sure, um, but they seem really chuffed in here. They seem really happy um, and they're pretty active actually for these. Um, they move around quite a lot. Yeah, it's just a nice little escape. Alrighty then, time to rock and roll. And these are, to start us off, the L129 Colombian Zebras, Hypancistrus debilitera. Um, these come in a really nice size, actually. This is probably the biggest um, I've had these in before. Um, they're about an inch and a half, maybe. Um, but these are a really small species. Um, probably get about double this. Alrighty, and next up we have the L199s, Hypancistrus furunculus. So, similar to the Colombian zebras, obviously these are all from a uh, Colombia delivery. Um, so these frunculus, that means bandit mask in Latin. I don't know why they didn't end up getting called bandit plecos. Um, I believe the common name is either um, like yellow Colombian zebra or yellow head zebra pleco um, or some nonsense like that. But these have come in really nice. You can see we've got a nice male there uh, with his big old head and his big old pectoral fins. Um, so yeah, they almost have stripes like the Dixerias, the um, butterfly plecos, um, but on a hypancestrous body. And then as they grow, it can become a little bit more articulated. So these are really, really nice actually. I really like these. Um, we'll get them in their tank. Alrighty then, so next up we have the uh, Blue Medusas Ancestrus macrothalamus. Um, and it might be my eyes actually, I feel like there's a couple of beginis in here. I might have to double check those, but those two, in fact, if those three actually might even look like Barrier Sisters Beginis, I'm not sure. They might have got a little bit mixed up. Um, but no, definitely got a couple of Blue Medusas here. Um, Ancestrus Macrothalamus, um, so a little bit different to Ancestrus uh, Ranunculus, which is the normal Medusa Pleco, um, and also the Spotted Medusas, the L255s that we've got in. Um, but yeah, but definitely those two look like Barrier Sisters Beginis to me. I can even see the white on the end of the tail. <laughs> So um, we've got a couple of extra beginnies, um, and yeah, the next bag is beginnies as well. In fact, those two look like beginnies as well. Um, so that's interesting. Okay. Um, but no, definitely got a few. So like that one there is a male, that one there's a female. Basically, if it looks kind of like a male normal bristle nose, it's probably a female. Um, yeah, might just need to investigate a couple of these. I do not think they are young macrothalamus. They look like very ancestrous to me. Got a couple of extra in there. Interesting. Cool. Alrighty then, so last but not least, we have the Berry and Sisters Beginis, Blue Black Panax. Um, you can see a couple of little catch marks on them, uh, on their dorsal fins, so I might just pop a little bit of treatment in with them. Um, and actually this bag looks quite uh, full of protein to me. Um, but they all look pretty good. They've come in a really nice size actually. Some of these I'd say are verging on um, sort of sub-adult size. That one and that one, definitely. Um, and yeah, they're a good bunch. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 of those, cool. So I'm gonna get these in their tanks and then um, I'm gonna basically just leave them to it for a couple of hours and then uh, I'll come back and um, we'll pop some food around for everybody. Um, might give these guys a little bit of food as well. We'll just see how they're doing. Um, so yeah, let's get these in their tanks and then I will see you in a bit. Alrighty then, so um, I've left them for a couple of hours and I've just got the room lights on. The tank lights are still off, um, so I'll leave them off for the uh, next, uh, day and they can come off uh, come back on on their timer in the morning um, but no so these are the L109s um, and they are looking really good actually um, they're all pretty active 
um, they've gone up inside this um, monstrosity here, uh, which is like a big hollow fake rock, um, and then there's space under it and behind it. Um, and then it looks like we've got a couple down here behind the filter as well. Um, so yeah, they're um, they're really nice actually. I really like those. They've got really really um, you know deep stripes. Um, so they are hypensistrus furunculus, and furunculus actually in Latin means bandit mask. So I'm not entirely sure why they didn't decide to call these bandit placos, um, but they are yellowhead placos or yellowhead zebra placos. I think some people call them um, bandit placos. Probably would have had a better ring to it, um, but yeah. So, they are closely related to things like your L333s, um, the Colombian zebras that we've got in, um, that kind of thing. They're a little bit bigger, um, and the, the pattern is actually um, really quite distinct on them because they've got really quite thick banding. And they're quite chunky, actually. They're quite tall-bodied. Um, so, no, um, they seem to be having a little bit of a nibble on some of the bits and pieces in the tank. Um, it's quite a mature tank, this one. There's lots of, um, like, Daphnia. We've got baby shrimp in here. Um, lots of bits and pieces. So they're all um, pretty settled, to be honest. Um, no heavy breathing whatsoever. Um, they seem super chilled. Um, so there we go. You can see the gills. Only marginally laboured. Maybe a little bit of a pop to it, you know, a little bit stressed out. Um, but no, all in all, considering this fish only arrived in the country um, at about nine this morning, um, doing pretty well. Yeah. And yep, here we go, we've got the little Colombian zebras. Um, now, these guys are a very shy species and they will all start descending into um, this pile of rocks and this um, this jar that I have here and the caves. Um, but they're absolutely divine little fellows. They're a really, really tiny hypensistra species and they only have maybe, you know, 15, 20 eggs at a time. So they're really, really tiny little fellows. Um, they really don't get too much bigger than about three, four inches, um, to be honest. Um, and they have this gorgeous pattern um, which doesn't really fade as they age. Um, sometimes you'll get really high white ones in. Um, obviously these are all wild fish. Um, so you can see that one at the back there is maybe a little bit more mature, a little bit higher in the body and the, the stripes are starting to separate a little bit more. So they're kind of like a really, really tiny L333. Um, but they are super, super cute. They know they're small so they are quite shy. Um, but I really like having these in there. These are super, super popular. So it's nice to get a little bit of close up on them before they all disappear actually. Because um, these are a little bit like the L471s where they're quite shy because um, they're, they're diddy little fellows. So you need quite small cage to breed them. And the females will uh, look really, really fat and round when they're ready to go actually. Um, but actually this is a really nice batch. I really like these. Very nice. So yeah, the uh, little blue medusas, um, this is one of the really tiny ones in the batch. There is one that I reckon is a beginning. this one is not. Um, it's just a, a young blue medusa um, that's pretty stressed because I've got the flash on it right now. So, um, but yeah, um, so these are the blue medusa, uh, the blue medusa placos. Uh, the species is Ancestrus macrothalamus, they are LDA074. Um, so they're a little bit wider and more more heady than um, the normal uh, Ancestrus ranunculus, um, which are the normal Medusa placos, um, and they stay quite a lot smaller as well. They're quite a small species, whereas the um, L two five five next door, um, which we've got a fellow just munching on a, an algae wafer just here. Um, these guys can get up to like 20 centimeters, 15, 20 centimeters. So these can get really quite uh, a good size. Um, whereas these are going to stay more around three, four inches. So they're a much smaller species. And yeah, the blue is very similar um, to the Barrier Sisters Beginnies, actually. Um, it must be something in the water over there that's making really, really pretty blue plateaus. Um, but true to form, Medusas are very, very shy. Um, when you first get them in, they do take a little while to tame up. The 255s weren't too bad, um, but definitely Ranunculus. I've got a pair that I've had for ages now, and I do not see them. Uh, it doesn't matter where I've had them. Um, they are not very uh, friendly. Um, but we'll see what these blue medusas are like. Um, and yeah, they just seem to be pretty relaxed. They've all done as they should, so nobody is just like freaked out at the front of the tank, breathing heavy, nobody's gone like stiff or anything. Um, and yeah, this placo is going around having a rasp. And then, yeah, last but not least on this delivery, we have the gorgeous L239 Barry Ancestress Beginis. 
uh, blue black panak I don't like to call them panaks they're just blue blacks to me uh, because they are not panaks they are barium citrus which means they're more of an algae grazing species but once again these are a really tiny species so none of the species that I've uh, ordered today are going to get much bigger than about five inches maximum these are a small species um, these are going to stay maybe around eight centimeters so these are actually quite a good size um, if my camera would focus that would be great um, but no these have come in quite a good size a little bit of rip fins and things where they've been caught and they've been chased around and stuff um, but as you can see this tank once again uh, got a nice big filter in here and um, there's lots of scuds, sea shrimp, whatever you call them in here uh, which these guys will probably have a little bit of a nibble on um, and then algae as well um, and then yeah I'm probably just going to leave them be for now because actually they seem really relaxed and their gills are you know these guys especially they, they look pretty chill and they're acting pretty much as they should so I'm probably just going to leave them as they are for now um, I'm not going to give them any food or anything because I, I feel like there's probably enough for them to just graze on it around the tank for this evening and then um, I'll give them some food early in the morning um, and yeah gonna be checking up on them on uh, fish cam as well so I've got uh, night vision cameras for the fish room now so I can watch them at night which is quite cool so I can see who's being active um, while I was having my lunch I was watching the L199s and they were all sort of like scurrying about being quite active so I don't really have too many concerns so these are um, the Blue Black Panax Baron Sisters Beginnies, so they're an algae grazer, they like quite a lot of flow, they like it quite warm, um, but actually compared to things like the Golden Nuggets, um, they're very very easy to keep, um, Magnums as well, they can be a little bit finicky, I have a Magnum in one of these tanks, um, and they do accept a little bit more of an omnivorous diet, they don't really need it, they, they really want veggie sort of base diet, um, but they quite like sweet potato, um, courgette, uh, broccoli, that kind of thing. And yeah, definitely Rapashi. If you want to see them, um, give them lots of rocks and um, little shady places because once again, they do know they're small and as their coloration suggests, you know, they, they like blending, blending in with quite dark atmosphere. Um, and have quite cool tone lights as well if you want to really get the, um, the blue out of them. But they're, um, they're quite easy to keep actually. They're quite, um, quite a bit easier than um, other species of Baryon Sisters, that's for sure. I know that golden nuggets are absolutely everywhere but I feel like more people should have these than golden nuggets to be fair. They're so, so sweet. And yeah, they stay super small and um, they're blue, but then the mature males will actually get these crazy orange spikes on their pectoral fins and out of their gills, like tangerine orange. Um, so yeah, if you guys have seen some of my footage, I might uh, insert some after this clip of um, one of our other males that we've got um, guarding a cave. Um, he doesn't have the, the spikes yet, but you'll be able to see the absolutely brilliant cobalt blue that these guys go when they're comfortable. Um, and yeah, just imagine sort of tangerine orange spikes coming out of those gills. I do apologise that this hasn't really been in focus, but my camera's obviously it's quite low light, so. But yeah, really pleased with these. Alrighty then, so we'll leave these guys here. Um, hope you've enjoyed today's little delivery. Um, we've got Peru coming next week, um, and I've obviously got a couple more videos planned as always, so um, keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.